Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead, Brooklyn, and I thought I'd switch it up a little bit because as you've been seeing from Plant One On Me's, I came back from Louisville, Texas with Steve's Leaves, and I actually had a chance to check out his whole total sum of plants. It's pretty much around, I would say, 1,200 different types of species, cultivars, and varieties. So he had a lot to choose from. So you may notice that I have this big box right here of live plants so I think I might have gotten spoiled rotten from Steve because I got to select some really interesting varieties so I thought we'd do an unboxing ceremony I mean I, I love these things I know you guys are like real big plant nerds and you really love to see all these really interesting varieties of plants in the home but why not show them as they're coming out of their packages so if you will give me a little bit of time. I'll open this up. I got this actually late last night. So I wanted to wait until this morning in order to film this. And I know a lot of us probably shop for plants at garden centers and plant shops, but I really love shopping for plants online because you could find varieties that you typically can't find at garden centers and plant shops. Oh my God. <laughs> this is really funny. He put in Skinny Pop. <laughs> he knows I like Skinny Pop. That's hilarious. This is um, a new form of uh, a packing peanuts, <laughs> edible. <laughs> what a great benefit, a nice little thank you note. I should be saying thank you to him though, however. All right, so these are all the plants. Let's go through this one by one. And you'll see, I'm, this is a, a little bit crazy. All right, this is an amdrium, I think. This is a type of aeroid. It's part of the philodendron and monstra group. This one grows pretty gangbusters, and that's really beautiful. Look at that, look at that feathery leaf right there. That's a gorgeous one. So for all the Aroid addicts out there, that one is a beauty. This is like Christmas all over again. This one looks like Huernia, a little succulent guy. This one's long point, so it probably is a, a cultivar. It doesn't have a, a species name. But you can see this, this is going to want a lot more sun because it is a succulent. This is one of the Colin Coeys, but it was filled with algae blooms. And Steve was like, I can't even sell that. And I'm like, yes, but it's so beautiful because the algae made it a little bit greener. So I asked him if he could send that to me because he wasn't able to actually even sell that anyway. This is one of my favorites because you guys probably already know I'm such a, a Peperomia lover. This is a Peperomia elongata. So you could see that the leaves are, are very long, very thin, lanceolate, and it's a rather succulent plant. So this basically tells me with these glossy green waxy leaves tells me that it's very good at holding on to water, meaning it doesn't transpire as much. So once it gets a little bit of water, it will hold on to it probably better than something that doesn't have such waxy succulent leaves. Oh. Here we go, another Peperomia. This is a Peperomia fraseri. So you've probably already seen me talk about this. I've done a plant one on me with this particular species. This Peperomia is very different from the other Peperomias because it doesn't have this typical possum-like rat tail. Um, this one is a little bit of an inflorescence on top here. Uh, this one has a little bit a, of a regular flower. It has a beautiful white tiny diminutive flowers that looks very different from any other Peperomia inflorescence. These are also very beautiful specimens. I love that Steve grows his plants out to about a four inch, which means you already get a pretty sizable plant. This is an interesting variety. I have one hanging up above me in the same family. This is a Cissus, and these are beautiful ivy-like Creatures. I mean, they are ivy, and you'll see they put out these really delicate tendrils that as soon as it finds something to grip around, it will 
twirl itself around. I've been seeing a lot of um, cistuses in the plant shops recently, but this one is um, a variety that I typically wouldn't find. But again, Steve, Steve's Leaves has this one. Let's see what the next one is. Ooh, this one kind of stopped me in my tracks. This is an impatience right here, and it has the most gorgeous leaves. I mean, this is an inky green, black, voluminous leaf with a fuchsia pink midrib. Absolutely stunning variety. Similar care, I would say, to the Gisnerids, all the, all, you know, all the St. Paulias and all the African violets and a number of others within that order. The question too and the challenge is then, where am I gonna put all these? But as the saying goes, you always have more room for plants or you find more room. Get rid of your clothes as I did in my, my closet garden now. I only wear like five things anyway, so. Oh, yes. So some of the Aroid lovers would also love this plant. Kind of reminds people maybe of the shingling plants like Monstera dubia, but this is a Raphidophora. So people who have Raphidophora tetrasperma, this is another shingling variety. Let me see the species name because I don't remember, remember it offhand. So this is Raphidophora cryptantha. So you could see it's quite beautiful. It's already shingling. I've always struggled with these, that they always have them on like one of their boards or sphagnum moss poles or whatever. And I'm always tempted to like remove them, but you have to remove them so carefully because the little aerial roots that are sticking out from the back, you could damage the plant very easily and you could, you could break the plant very easily. So I often just leave the, the board in there. I'd say that we're a little less than halfway through this unboxing ceremony. This will probably be the longest video I've ever shot. <laughs> Another Peperomia. This one is a stunner. This one is Peperomia viridis. It's a variegated version. I think that Steve has had this variety for a very, very long time. It's pretty easy to take care of. It can get pretty leggy, so I've actually cut some of mine back because they, if you're not giving it the, the most appropriate optimal light, then it could get leggy, but you can as I said, slice them back so it has a little bit more of a compact growth. Let's see what's next. And the people with who love like variegated or uh, chimeric plants will probably love that one because it has a little bit of yellow green variegation in its leaves. This one's a unique one. They encouraged me to take this one. It has a little bit like that Pilea peperomioides look. So it has this roundish leaf. This is um, Peperomia keratropha, it looks like. I didn't, I wasn't familiar with this one, but Darren who works with Steve um, had mentioned that this one would be a favorite of mine. So I ended up taking it. I like ones that look like the Pilea just because they're kind of the, it's the plant of the moment at the moment. Not really the plant of the moment in places like the Netherlands because you could get them for five bucks there. I mean, currently you could get them for around 40 or $50 here in the, the States, but with all due time, it's, they're gonna be $5 and you could get them at, at, at the bodegas pretty soon. Um, the, the rate at, like the growers are starting to grow them. Yeah, I got a duplicate plant. This might mean I have to do a giveaway or another plant swap. This is another Raphidophora. So this one's a, another beautiful variety. You could see that they, he, he does some really, you know, he grows them very gorgeously. So highly encourage anybody who wants a little bit of a different plant beyond the ones that they could find at their garden center. Steve's Leaves is a, is a great place to go. And as you can see, they pack them very well. And these plants have been sitting probably in the, uh, the post office or coming to the post office in like two to three days. So, oh yeah, these are, this is a nice one. I have a smaller version of this. It's a Peperomia cyclophila. They do lose its leaves like very easily if you kind of touch them. You could see here, this is a better close up of um, 
of the inflorescence on these peperomias. So some people would like to say that this is more akin to a rat's tail or I'd say a possum's tail, but I think they're, they're pretty great. And peperomia are diminutive plants. They're, they're great for apartment living. You could fit them anywhere. Of course, if you get like 30 different varieties, you might not be able to fit them anymore in your small apartment, but <laughs> we'll deal with that. This is stunning. I don't remember actually picking this plant out. This is a Dishidia. It's a funny name, right? Dishidia. Um, oh yeah, I do remember picking this out. Dishidia hirsutu. I, now, Dishidias and Hoyas are one of those plants that I was kind of like not caring for properly, strangely enough. They have this like more succulent appeal, so I immediately wanted to put it in full sun, um, bright light, but actually a lot of them prefer to be screened. So it's a bright light but more indirect so now that i know how to you know be a little bit more kind to my hoyas and deshidias then um i've i've gotten to be a better plant mom for those okay we have a half dozen after this you guys are probably either lusting or saying hitting your faces and saying how the hell is she going to deal with all of these this is a very interesting, this is a Colin Coey. I don't remember what, what kind of Colin Coey. I think it was a Buverdia. Um, this one was very unique because it has these like frilly looking, yeah, it's Colin Coey Buverdia. Um, it's, it's almost like this little, it's got this frills and curls, very different from typical Colin Coey. So I, uh, I thought this one would be really nice to add to my collection. One of my favorite succulents is actually the Colin Coey. Oh, this is a this is a beautiful version of uh, Peperomia Hoffmania. This is a gorgeous plant that I unfortunately lost because I had a friend who came over and overwatered my peperomias. I had um, I, I had lost about four pepperoni peperomias to that that watering episode. But look at this beautiful version. Okay, this one is going to have to be babied because this one is just exquisite you know it could take up to like six months to actually grow something like this out so you know when we go to the plant shops and we see those beautiful plants and we buy this like really big plant we oftentimes don't even appreciate how long it actually takes to get up to that moment um, within the greenhouse <laughs> okay these guys are so crazy i have kind bars now this is like i'm going on like vacation or like a road trip this is hilarious. This is the beauty of getting to know your growers. Another peperomia. This is um, a cultivar called peperomia bamboo sticks. And if we get really up close, you'll be able to see that it has these little rings around the stems, which are these kind of like this little, these nodes, very, very characteristic nodes. I'm not sure how they actually selected for this cultivar, but it is genius. This is a a cultivar that I had found there. So this is a Calumnia Carnival. Mmm, ay ay ay. Uh, this is beautiful. This is, you could probably, so I think it's in the same group as like a Aeschcananthus or a goldfish plant. Um, so very similar care. I wouldn't have this up against direct light too much. I would have it more in medium light and um, and I would up the the humidity a little bit. Actually, all of these plants would probably benefit from a little bit of uh, a little bit of humidity. So I would say moderate to moderate high for the vast majority of these, except for maybe some of the succulents that I got. I promise, guys, we're really getting to the end. <laughs> Although you're probably like more, more, more. Oh, this is a begonia. So. This one, the Begonia pavanina, you can't see it from here, but I am going to try to photograph this. If you get it at the right light, it will shine an iridescent blue because of specific chloroplasts in it called iridioplasts. And this is a way for it to get more light because this grows in more of the understory conditions. And you'll see it has this really dark green almost black leaf and it has these red bottoms that you could often see in 
um, calatheas or marantas, the prayer plants. And this is a way for the light to come through, it then captures it and bounces back up into this area where the chloroplasts are. But if you hit it at the right kind of angle at the right moment in time, maybe in the morning hours, it will look a little blue. So I asked him to send me this because I didn't have chan a chance to shoot it at his greenhouse. And so that one is going to be an experimental one. This one seems to be a meaty specimen. Oh, this is gorgeous. I saw this one and I was like, have to have it. This is um, a Signonium erythrophila. So I love Signoniums. It's also another aroid. And this one you could see probably grows in the understory again. It has that bright, glossy green leaves with the red bottoms, very similar to that begonia that I showed you, and also pretty similar to the glossy leaves of this Peperomia elongata. So, you know, this one could probably tolerate a little bit more lower light conditions. <laughs> so this is the entire unboxing of Steve's leaves. So we have some Peperomia viridis, we have some Impatiens, we have some Colin Coe, Buverdii, uh, Peperomia fraseri. We have the Emridiums. This is a Hoffmania Peperomia, a Cyclophila, a Huernia long points, um, another Colin Coe, Peperomia elongata. We have this Peperomia, I don't remember what it is, um, Carrie Trofata. I can't even, I can't even pronounce that. You're lucky if you just get it close with that Latin. This is a Begonia pavonina, pavonina Peperomia bamboo sticks, a Columnia uh, carnival. This is a Cissus and some Raphidophoras, a Signonium and a Dichidia. Wow, that was an incredible unboxing. So I do hope you enjoyed that. If you're interested in any of these species, you can go to stevesleaves.com. And be sure to tune in every week on Thursdays to plant one on me on my YouTube channel. You're gonna be seeing a lot of tips from Steve's leaves as of late. And of course, you can follow along on my journey at Homestead Brooklyn on Instagram and at homesteadbrooklyn.com. And if you like this channel and you never wanna miss out on some really good gardening tips and new plants, including unboxing ceremonies, then tune in here and subscribe. Bye guys.